Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Kelly from I, the Royal Bee Yarn Company. I'm Tony from the Royal Bee Yarn Company as well. And also a teacher here yes. in Pacifica. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to our little shop, our yarn shop in Pacifica, California, we also have our own yarn. And I was trying to be prepared, actually just a tiny bit. And I did grab two hanks of my yarn. They're right over here though. Okay, I can grab them in a minute. Okay. Grab them, grab them. We'll give them a squish and show them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I have, this is my newest. This is the old one. Old new, old new. And the old is like a year and a half old, not that old. Squish, squish, squish. You wanna give this one a squish? Squish, squish, new squish, new squish. Okay. So this is the Purple Couch Collection, and I have this in fingering all the way through Super Bulky. It's 18 Micron Merino from Fleece that um, are from Happy Sheep, raised in a little farm in North Carolina, and then milled nearby and hand dyed in natural vegetable dyes. And then this, so it's super soft, super smooth, and then this is my brand spanking new yarn and it is also from the same sheep but it's woolen spun mm. so and it's called the pacifica coastside collection so mm. um and we um we named these after members of our hive that have helped us a ton <clears throat> and then the Hive members actually helped us name the Pacifica Coastside Collection, and we named it out of pla uh, um, places uh, here in Pacifica. So what's this one called, Cal? This one's called A Golden Day at Sunset Ridge, which is where Tony teaches. That's right. So, yeah. Wow. Sort of If teach. the school's open. Well, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> I see that you are stroking your bandana. It's my conversation <laughs> piece. It's my Empower conversation piece purple scarf. Yeah. And it, it works because you asked about it. I did, didn't I? Yeah. So it's a purple bandana from the Empower People 2020. Go to their website, take a peek. Um, this is out of our new woolen spun. So it's got a little bit of texture and some stiff stitch definition. And my friend Magda actually made this one. Am I modeling um, a piece? I think you're modeling a piece. I think you're actually modeling a piece. Oh, that's, that's really alluring. <laughs> Maybe wear trying... it as, try, try it on as a bandana, not around your neck. Oh. I think that would be pretty darn cute. So the idea is you wear your purple bandana and then, oh. <laughs> little purple riding hood. I look like I'm off to uh, <laughs> conquer the Antarctic in 1912. <laughs> it's a good look. Okay, oh, I see her like this. <laughs> <laughs> now I look kind of like Princess Leia. You couldn't script it. <laughs> I'll be like Kenobi. <laughs> so, anyway, it's to encourage people to get out, vote, wear it, wear it, out and talk about it and help social justice reform so yeah you really like that don't you it's really warm i'm Isn't a warm person yeah, i get warm I very i don't wear a lot of clothing because i'm warm went to get a jacket the other week day and just because yeah. we were going away somewhere for the day yeah. and um i you looked mean, at my jacket so it was like seeing old friends we like, went yesterday yeah you mean yesterday yeah Oh, we should talk about Easter. But let me show you that you can, it's not too late to get involved. I mean, the idea is that we wear our bandanas all through August, but you can, do you want to do the long reach? You can knit it, you can crochet it, you can sew it, whatever you want. And then wear it. And wear it. Support your local dyers. Buy some purple yarn. Buy, our pur buy some purple yarn from a local <laughs> dyer, yes. I'm actually out of my own purple yarn, but I have lots of other choices mm. in the shop. And I've got spendy options and not so spendy options if you want to make a ton. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you look pretty cute. I kind of like you like that. Thanks. We'll see how long that lasts. Yeah. I, I suspect it's probably fairly hot. I bet I can leave it on all Do you think show. so? Do you yeah. think? Yeah. I love that. I would love that if you did that. Hmm. We'll see if it happens. Speaking of getting your coat and we went for a hike yesterday. We did, we went for a hike, we or did. a mini hike. We did. I mean, for me, it was a full-on, full-scale, 
like have to stop and breathe yeah Hi. well it was 90 degrees where we went we went to Glen yeah. Ellen in um, just over the Golden Gate Bridge yeah. in, uh, in Sonoma yeah and uh, if you are uh, a Jack London fan you'll know that Glen Ellen was um, um, where he his ashes are scattered mm -hmm. and um, we went on the to see his gravesite and we went to see his wolf lodge mm -hmm. and we looked at nature and yeah. birds and leaves and things it was great yeah. we really argued hot. over like what was poison oak and what wasn't poison oak <laughs> yeah. there's real oak which is not poison so poison oak which is poison so we did the rub on your face test where you yeah. take the leaves and rub them on your face <laughs> no, you don't yeah. don't do that don't do that and then it was really <laughs> i'm gonna totally tell on you okay yeah, yeah. so i constantly do this to him uh, you know in video forever and generally in public. Super beautiful part of the world and not too far away, which was great. Easy little jaunt, easy little drive. And, but we weren't really sure, you know, were there gonna be a lot of people out enjoying nature? That's the only kind of problem, I think a little bit with enjoying nature is that sometimes you're enjoying it with a lot of other people. And right now yeah. during the pandemic is just simply not safe. If you go to Muir Woods, you have to make an appointment to see trees. Well, you know, a lot, it's popular. But um, so we were like, okay, we're gonna go. We'll, you know, we'll just go over the bridge and see. And if, you know, if it feels unsafe in any way, if there are too many people, we'll just simply turn around and go home. Mm -hmm. But as it turned out, there was next to nobody in the park. I mean, it was deserted. And it was deserted so much so that the park ranger was like, okay, make sure that as you're walking, that you're making a lot of noise because what you don't want to do is to startle the mountain lions. Don't the startle mountain, mountain lions. No. They don't like it. And they've, and they've been really So active. don't creep up on them with a balloon and go <laughs> bang. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to mountain lions. And they, um, they, they so make a really, lot of noise. <laughs> they've been really active. And so Tony just got his, you know, we're walking around and it's really kind of, we, there's nobody there where it's kind of a little bit creepy. I have zero sense of direction, so I'm always frightened of being lost. Tony is much more confident. If I wasn't with Tur Tony, I wouldn't have gone. And so anyway, so Tony got his, oh, Tony got his keys out and it was just jingling his keys, you know, as we were going along. <laughs> it devolved into this like of course the mountain lions would hear us because we were giggling really loudly because tony kept we tend like, to make each other laugh a lot don't we <laughs> it's, stupid. it's really stupid i said i, said, I was kind of like <laughs> yeah yeah so, <laughs> into, just for a joke just for a joke i wouldn't really want kelly to be eaten by a mountain lion <laughs> he started calling me kelly kobe and that, I, and I, because I said, I think I would be, you know, I would be very well marbled. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I'd be more juicy and delicious. <laughs> so that was fun. We had a fun, anyway, like, lots of laughs. Was, it was, yeah, as usual. And it was a lot of exercise. We were really sweaty. Yeah, we, it's uphill, downhill. Uphill, downhill. and it's two and miles, two and a half lots miles. Of rocks but in that, and lots the heat of, was very. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, being a Brit where anything over 55 is really hot. <laughs> um, this was very hot. But it was really cool seeing Jack London's oh, yeah. Wolf Lodge, which he had built. And the day before they were going to move in, it burnt to the ground, which was kind of sad. And it then... was really tragic because he <clears throat> had been, because of um, the fires and earthquakes, basically oh, yeah. because of the earthquake, in San Francisco and all of the fires, he wanted the um, lodge to be made out of volcanic rocks so that it was kind of like fireproof. And, and they used like redwoods. And, and then it spontaneously combusted, burst in flame, yeah. burned to the ground. Yeah, not the, the, I mean, the whole structure is there because there, of the, um, the volcanic I have photographs rock. on my phone, but you're using yeah. the phone to film this. Oh, so. yeah. Okay. But yeah. it's Glen Allen up in uh, Sonoma. Beautiful. Check it out, really nice. Yeah. And we had nice Mexican food as well. We did. We had really good food. Mole. Socially distanced outside. Very socially distanced. Um, really good place. That's that was tables. our criteria. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we were very socially distanced. We were distance. We were like six miles away from anyone from yesterday. I think it was Except nice. for maybe. Except the for the lady line. in the booth. 
<laughs> and several manta lions. lions. <laughs> <laughs> we're thinking and lizards. Lizards. There are a lot of lizards. A lot of lizards and cool insects, mm. birds. Oh yeah, you found a, a Katie did. A Katie did, yeah. It's yeah. a funny name for an insect, yeah. but it's a cool looking insect. Look it up, Google that. Katie, Katie did. So what else is new with you? Nothing really. Um, gearing up for school. Start soon. You're kind of blue in the blue light. Am I? Because the blue screen. We still have construction going, and so they have um, blue film to protect the windows. So yeah. we may be in a slightly blue cast, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, so yeah, getting ready for school. Um, the whale. Oh my God! There's oh, a whale yeah. in the bay today. Um, it's probably a whale. It's probably like two miles down the road. There's a whale in the bay, just splashing around, making a hell of a lot of. I didn't see it. I was splash. watching the road. And. Oh yeah, I was watching the road as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, wow, it's so lucky we live where these whales, I think they're gray whales, they look like gray whales, that's very small. But um, for whales. It's funny because I come from whales. Yeah, I, know, I was gonna say not the country of whales, not to be Anyway, confused, let's talk about but... something else. Well, okay, so, <clears throat> um, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes, one Last episode, episode again, I don't know, anyway. Um, we're still very much promoting the Sun and Fog collection, uh, which is a group of eight designers and eight yarn makers, and is also part of the Bay Area Fiber Fair. So check it out. Take a look at the Sun and Fog and take a look at the Bay Area Fiber Fair uh, online, and you can participate. And we have kits up. We have kits up for... A uh, later's baby with a FIFA, and we've got like a spendy option, which is gorgeous wool folk, and then we have a less spendy option, which is Barocco. And then today you are gonna see, even though we did it last week, well, we oh, and we have some explaining to do. So Tony is in the process of getting his administrator's credential because he wants to become a principal. He's been a teacher for over 20 years and has decided that he wants to go into a leadership role. So the first step is assistant principal credential. You have to do that first. So that's what he's doing right now. And he's actually a teacher on special assignment at um, the school. So we, I keep saying he's a teacher and he's teacher on, on special assignment. And Tosa. Tosa. Or in Britain, yeah. Tosa. Yeah, it's, mm. it's not a good thing. Uh, not PG rated. And um, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, so he, oh, I know what I was saying because you were on one of your virtual credentials and it was the only time that I oh, could schedule yeah. my interview with Kira. So I did this one by myself. So someone started and, up a very large car outside. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's just Kira and I. We had fun anyway. Yeah. We did miss having Tony. Tony does not plan to be absent unless something like this comes up, but it was a Mountain three hour <laughs> yeah, three hour class that he had to be on. So <laughs> I think you and I are the only people that are gonna think that's pretty funny. So, Doesn't matter, anyway. that's all it is. That's what our love is all about. Making each other laugh <laughs> when no one else can so, feel funny. Yeah. So um Kira is who Kira of Kira K Designs, okay, is <laughs> who we have interviewed, and she is a, a local Bay Area designer, and she is fantastic. And the two of us were actually um, teamed up together originally for the um, pre prelude to Lambtown, uh, and now it's part of the Bay Area Fiber Fair Sun and Fog collection. And what I love about this shrug is not only is it adorable and versatile and looks good over just about everything, it's also the fact that it's crocheted and crochet's kind of underrepresented. So I was happy to kind of represent the, the crocheters. And so these kits are now up and available online. And um, sure, you can buy my yarn and make it, of course, the um, photograph is made with three of my own colors, but I also wanted to promote one of the yarns that I've talked about before that um, I sell in my shop and from um, Brooke from Sincere Sheep. She's based out of Napa and uh, this is her Cormo fingering, which she has custom milled for her. And her base is so soft and 
full of texture. It's just beautiful. I absolutely adore her yarns. And that's just one example of one of the kits that I've put together. So you can treat yourself and go for um, the option of Sincere Sheep, or if you're really getting competitive with the Bay Area Fiber Fair and you wanna do a whole bunch of stuff and you wanna be a little bit more economical, then um, Popsicle, which I also have featured previously, is a wonderful yarn that it utilizes uh, two recycled bottles and it saves it from landfill and then bamboo fibers and it's really kind of like a light silky uh, sheeny yarn really lovely I don't know why I'm holding it you're in charge of holding and squishing so let me get yeah. that's my job <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> so it's kind of it's it's been really interesting there's been a lot of activity in terms of the Bay Area Fiber Fair, and by the time this gets edited, you um, and up, it'll probably be tomorrow. And we're having like a, um, I think it's like six of the yarn shops in the area, as well as um, some of the designers, etc. We're hosting a um, Zoom chat to go through rules and you know just get everybody excited about the Bay Area Fiber Fair because it's gonna go on until October. It's tilting. What we're trying to do is just kind of, you know, without the corn dogs, recreate that sort of excitement around making and entering and and and, and showcasing and showing off our projects. Mm. And then also collecting ribbons. Oh of which Reminder of the stickers. Yeah, stickers. And um, so, yeah, so we've been involved in that, and um, the shop is open. We have a teeny little trickle of traffic, so it's all feeling incredibly safe. We have hand sanitizers, everybody wears masks, we have social distancing, but honestly, I never really have more than like two or three people in the shop at the same time, anyway, shopping. Um, unless like a group of people have come together, which of course really isn't happening in any meaningful way. Just thanks and, to anyone who's yeah, helped thank us you all so by much. Buying anything Anybody online who's or coming yes, in. It's just, yes. Just even talking to your friends about the shop and yeah, it's really really still helpful. Still, there are people around you who say, "I didn't know you were here." Yeah, yeah. It's been three and years. Every little bit is helping. Mm -hmm. uh, it all goes to keep us alive. 29th of July is our third year anniversary. Oh, I know. 29th of July. Yeah. Three years. Three years. Yeah. That would be our three year anniversary. And normally what I do is two sales a year. I do one sale in April, which April 1st was the day that we got the keys for the shop. And then <laughs> I do one at the very end of July or very beginning of August because that's when we officially opened. And um, so, yeah, those were really happy doing, memories. Yeah, been doing but Jeanette, three years, yeah. who was our first dollar. Yeah. Well, and I think fun. Magda Sorry. might have, been, that was like a pre-event, and I think Magda might have been our first actual customer when we opened up. Mm -hmm. um, Jeanette, first customer in terms of the first dollar, because we weren't technically open the If you want to come and see that yeah. dollar, it's available it's for you to walk, look at on the <laughs> Just walk in the door, look at the dollar, and leave again. That's and it's fun. amazing that in three years, so many of the people that... You know, I didn't know the like our community three years ago, and now we have such a beautiful community. And mm -hmm. thank you all because you are keeping me, you are keeping me alive and keeping, uh, keeping the in, shop uh, going. So I appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of it for me, really, in terms of what I'm doing. Well, that would be good because I oh, think she's yeah. here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I better disappear yeah. to do the work. Uh, Oh yeah. To do. yeah. Oh right, right, right. And you're right. gonna say hello oh, okay, to. Okay. I'm not gonna okay. say hello to. It, so I'm of course not, because you. you're not here. You weren't here. Okay, so. Hi, Kira. Hi. <laughs> um. Hi, I'm Kelly here from the Royal Bee Yarn Company, and I'm super, super pleased because we have Kira of Kira K Designs, um, who's really well known in the Bay Area. And you may um, also know her from Ravelry. She also, she does a ton of stuff. So I won't tell you all about her. 
tell you about her. But I'm very excited that our hair kind of matches. I noticed that. So cool. I totally noticed. That. I don't know if it's like a trick of the light. Mine's like a bright fuchsia. Is yours a little redder? Yeah, I just nice. decided to go a little, you know, like walk down crazy with my hair. Yes. Just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. And I, I've got, you know, the standard questions that I ask everybody, but, you know, and, and the first one would be like, what was your journey to becoming a designer, but you're so much more than a designer. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, you know, your journey to becoming a designer, but then you also do retreats and you're a teacher. And one of these days, I'm going to get you into the classroom here at the B. But anyway, over to you. All right, um, so I've always been crafty. I learned to crochet when I was three, if you believe my mother, which I didn't for a while, but she keeps telling me this, so I think it must be true. And I remember knitting when I was five and I did sewing and embroidery and all kinds of other crafty things when I was a kid. Uh, it was the 80s, so I also did like plastic canvas embroidery with acrylic yarn and like those um, fuse beads and all kinds of you know stuff that isn't the best materials, but um, it was fun. Um, and I ended up getting stuck on mostly sewing. I went to college for costume design. Well, really, my degree's in theater, and then within that, I did technical theater, and then as much as I could, I just did costumes, costumes, costumes. And I worked in theater for a while, but theater isn't much of a job, and if you can believe it, um, working part-time in a yarn store started out as a way to support my theater job. And that doesn't pay much either, but um, it was better, at least steady. Uh, and I think that that really was where I started designing knitwear because I'd been knitting off and on my whole life. Um, but having done some design work more in the sewing realm kind of influenced it. And I was at a yarn store in downtown San Francisco. I don't know if you knew this one, Kelly. It was called Art Fibers. Um, oh, I think it was around before I moved to the area. I think I was still in the UK. Yeah, that, actually, I think that's true. Um, and so being there, I just was surrounded by yarn and uh, we actually got a little yarn budget as part of our pay. So I got free yarn to make stuff for myself to wear to the store, which was awesome because then I would just make all kinds of things and I didn't worry at all if it was very good and I would, you know, take it out and do it again and experiment. Um, so I learned a lot doing that. And my customers would come in and they'd want to make what I was wearing. I say, oh yeah, I just made it up. You can do it too. You can make it up. <laughs> Everybody feels confident doing that. So after about two or three years of people being grumpy that they couldn't make what I was wearing, I ended up finally starting to write things down. Um, which is interesting because the making up of the stuff and just coming up with something off the cuff is probably the easiest part. <laughs> I find that the math of grading to different sizes and even making sure that a pattern looks good in multiple sizes, because not everything that I had made for myself sort of made sense when I graded it up to different ranges. Um, but that's tricky. The, the technical writing aspect of it is definitely tricky and something that I'm not always up for. Like any time of day or night, I can probably never crochet, no problem. But sitting down to write up a pattern is um, just something I can only do at certain times when I'm feeling like extra focused, not distracted. Um, so yeah, that was in, let's see, I started publishing patterns in 2007. I'd already been teaching since 2002 at that shop and then I branched out to different yarn shops. Um, now, I mean, of course, nothing's normal right now, but generally in a normal month, I teach at four or five different yarn shops across the Bay Area. And even in a normal week, I'm probably at three or four of them because <laughs> I keep busy. And then I also do all kinds of events. So I'll do yarn tours where I take a group of people and carpool around to different yarn shops, but also things like button stores or like a behind the scenes at a dyer's dye studio. I try to do something that not everybody knows about or can go to on their own. And then I also do retreats, both single day ranch retreats where we go out to meet alpacas or meet sheep and meet the ranchers and start a project with the yarn from that farm. And then I do long weekend retreats. And my next one is coming up in April, rescheduled from this past May when it didn't happen. But um, I'm looking forward to that one too. You have um, just the most positive reputation for like you, your your teaching skills are incredible and the retreats are so beloved. Oh. And so many of my customers know who you are and just absolutely adore you. So I, you know, I can't wait until COVID is over and we can get you in the shop teaching a ton. 
to get oh, that out. Great. Yeah, it'll be amazing. And, yeah, um, I miss I, it. I didn't sure. realize that sewing was your first craft. I mean, that was mine too. I was I started sewing when I was pretty young. When I was in high school, um, I, as kind of a, a plus size high schooler, um, I wanted. I thought I was like all punk rock, um, and so I wanted to wear like the. All my friends were like going to thrift stores and buying like 1950s vintage dresses, wearing them with their, you know, their combat boots, mm -hmm. their Dr. Martens, and none of them fit me. And I wasn't even that big back then. I was like mm -hmm. a good solid, like size 14 or 16. And so I thought I'm going to try to make myself. And so most, you know, make myself the dresses. And mm -hmm. so I'd get these vintage patterns and then I figured out how to make the vintage patterns bigger because I also mm -hmm. found that a, a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, but then I started just making a ton of my own clothes. That's and wonderful. That's yeah. There was yeah. a list at some stage where it went from being more economical to making mm -hmm. clothes to not. You know, I have a theory about this. Um, yeah. Do you mind if I pontificate for a minute? No. Because <laughs> it's, it's one of my things. <laughs> I feel like I hear people complaining that knitting is really expensive or that nice yarn is really expensive. And I don't think it is. I think what it is is that all the ready to wear stuff has gotten so incredibly cheap. And that's because we have all these other costs going on behind the scenes because, you know, the really, really inexpensive clothing. Like people say, why would you knit socks? It costs you, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks for the sock yarn. You can just go to a big box store and buy a pack of five socks. And first of all, they're not as good the socks, right? Those aren't nice handmade wool or wool blend socks. But also, um, you know, you're looking at like a factory conditions that might not be great for the workers. It might be in a different country where we don't have labor laws. They might not get to go to the bathroom during their shift, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have synthetics and like overflow of the dyes going into the waterways. And then you have shipping, all the carbon going, you know, wool even if it's wool coming from here shipping to a different country where it gets made under weird conditions and shipped back like all of that is just so it is expensive it's expensive to the world it's expensive to humanity um but i don't think that the act of knitting or sewing and like getting the supplies is actually cost any more than it used to it's just so many other things the prices have come down at a different cost you know what I totally agree with you. That makes complete sense to me. And I'm the biggest like proponent of um, trying to be as both environmentally conscious about you know where your wool has come from, the you know, has mewling been involved, mm -hmm. like you know, making sure that you've got happy sheep and uh, happy animals, that everything is fair in terms of the manufacture and particularly ethical dye practices. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand just how toxic and bad for the environment some of the dye practices can be, not just for yarn, but also just fast mm -hmm. fashion in general. Oh, yeah. And I, I really appreciate the concept of the, the slow movement or even the fiber shed concept mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, what you wear, mm -hmm. what we consume has such an impact on other people in other places. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I totally agree with you. Actually, if I can slip in a book recommendation, I'm reading right now the book Raw Material. It's oh, by wow. Stephanie Wilkes, who's local to us. She lives in San Francisco. She's a certified sheep shearer. And the book is, um, it's a mix. So it's about her journey to become a sheep shearer from just like a lady who likes yarn. And was like, oh, there aren't a lot of sheep shearers. I'll try it. So her figuring out how to do that. And it's apparently really, really hard, which is not surprising at all. Um, but also it's about wool and what it means to us and how it's made. And she goes through, you know, from her taking wool off a of sheep, talking about processing and, um, you know, sales channels and everything. It's, it sounds a little dry when I explain it, but it's a really great book and I've been zipping through it. Oh, yay. So you should I, interview I, her at some point. I will. I told you mm -hmm. I've met her before. Mm -hmm. And actually, we're kind of friends on, on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, she actually bought some of my yarn. Um, and um, yeah, she's the lady sheep shearer. Mm -hmm. Isn't yep. that right? 
Like that's yeah, Lady Sheep shares her Instagram. Mm -hmm. said, yeah, she's amazing. And I, I knew that her book had come out. And I think we'd even talk about we had talked about doing like a book signing here, but mm -hmm. I think COVID hit. Yeah, she was going to come to my retreat in May and talk to us for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I totally, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating when you, and you start going, going down the rabbit hole and, um, uh, it changes your behavior a lot too. Mm -hmm. the, more you, the more you learn about fast fashion mm -hmm. and wool production and cotton production and any of the, um, plant-based fiber production, mm -hmm. water involved and so on and so forth, it starts to become, um, well, for me, it's become a little bit of an obsession, so. Yeah, it's hard to be perfect, though. Like, I still am like, ooh, there's a sale. Maybe I'll pick up something inexpensive. That'll be fun. Um, but, yeah, it's it's tricky. As a yarn maker, I mm -hmm. am super um, conscious of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be like if I was going into making shoes and decided that I was going to use, like, child labor. Like, mm -hmm. it's, my, it's my responsibility to know about it. And yeah. in terms of the yarns that I carry in the shop, I make sure that I understand the sources of all of the fibers and all of the content. But I really don't blame other people who aren't as familiar with, mm -hmm. um, with this because I'm probably wearing something that is not good like mm -hmm. you know or you know we can't you're right it's impossible to be perfect or um or to behave perfectly uh but you can pick and choose your battles when you become aware of them so exactly and always try to be a little bit you know more in tune with stuff and pay a bit more attention and you know cut yourself a little slack <laughs> yeah, yeah, you <laughs> who know. knows who sewed this dress i bought it used so i feel like it's not you know directly on me but yeah who knows yeah. Well, um, I was curious where you grew up. Sure. I grew up in Vermont in a little town that was about 3,000 people at the time. Uh, I would tell you the name, but unless you are from really close to there, you would not know what it is. But it was about 20 minutes outside of Burlington, which is what we consider a city in Vermont, which is about maybe 35,000 people at the time. It's a little bigger now. Not so very small town. Mm -hmm. And when you were little and dreaming about what you wanted to do when you grew up, what was, what was your sort of dream? Changed it a lot, but one of the ones that I remember is that at one point I decided I wanted to be an engineer. And there were two reasons that I wanted to be an engineer. One is that my dad was a, an engineer and he always had money and I thought that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know, buy all the candy I wanted. I don't even know why I wanted money, but. My dad always had money. That seemed nice. And the second one was that I had those Oshkosh engineer stripe overalls and I love them and I want to wear them every day. And somehow it never occurred to me that my father, who was an engineer, did not wear Oshkosh stripe overalls. <laughs> okay. so, so, yeah, in my mind, I thought I could do those two things and had no idea what the job was. Didn't really know what my dad did, just knew the word. <laughs> but yeah, I went through lots of other stuff um, off and on. Yeah. You feel like you're living your dream now. I kind of feel like you're living your dream. <laughs> I actually think I'm kind of an engineer now. Because <laughs> I feel like doing, like designing with knitting and crochet, like it's, it's that sort of thing where I'm sort of creating something that's three dimensional. It's all got to work together. You've got all these different pieces. It's like, my dad doesn't agree with me, of course. <laughs> but it is like, it's a building sort of a thing. And you have to understand the concept and kind of the, um, physical laws that are going to affect things and how the yarn is spun and your stitches and all of that. Um, Very but, nice. yeah. yeah, there's definitely math. There's, like, I feel like I'm a technical writer in terms of writing up patterns. I do a lot of math with that, with teaching as well. Um, but yeah, in general, I love my job. Um, I really, I love teaching. I love teaching people how to make things. And I love teaching people how to kind of get unstuck on a project or get over a hurdle because they worry that they can never do you know, fill in the blank. Like I could never make a sweater. And we're like, okay, let's do this class. We're going to meet every other week, six times, and you're going to go through all the steps to make a sweater. If we need a seventh time, we'll have a seventh time and kind of get through each piece of it because people get so overwhelmed with the whole. Um, and some people, just from the beginning, they're like, oh, you know, I heard brioche was hard. I'm not going to try it. Oh, I love this sweater. It has a zipper. I can't do a zipper. Like people just get themselves stuck so much. But I love um, being able to sort of Stay calm is a very important part of teaching, I think, and um, 
sort of walk people through things, but also inspire confidence that they can, that they can figure it out. That's the thing about knitting and crochet is that everybody really can do it. Mm -hmm. There truly is no genuine barrier uh, mm -hmm. apart from just, you know, trying. Speaking of crochet, mm -hmm. I see what you're wearing. <laughs> Let me turn around because this is, this is kind of the money shot of this one. That's yeah. so cute. <laughs> It's ridiculously cute, and I Aww. absolutely love it. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about it? Sure, yeah. So this is uh, my latest pattern. It's called the Tricolor Shrug because it's got three colors kind of mixed in little stripes, um, all done seamlessly. Uh, and it's made in your yarn, so three colors of your fingering weight yarn, which I loved working with. Um, and I love it's got a nice ply twist so it doesn't unply as you crochet the way that some yarns kind of start drifting apart. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually, I'll take it off so I can show it better. And also because it's a little warm in my house right now. <laughs> so this is part of the Sun and Fog collection, which is a group of eight different indie dyers from the Bay Area and eight different designers. And we all got together um, and created this collection of patterns. It's all things that, you know, make sense in our climate in the summer and fall. Um, so tops and accessories. So they're mostly shawls, cowls, and tops. Uh, and then this one shrug. And yeah, it was designed, originally the project was um, sort of getting ready for Lambtown Festival in the fall, which is my favorite local yarn and wool festival, um, which is going to be virtual. So I think we'll have some component for the Sun and Fog collection for Lambtown as well. Um, but it was really lovely just to work with this group of people and everyone brings different ideas to the table and different skill sets, which is always so nice. Um, it's part of a group that's called the Fiber Salon, which is all these local um, indie businesses. So we have dyers, designers, yarn shop owners, and um, people who do notions. And that's how I met you, yeah. Um, yeah. which is great. Like, I love the whole idea of Fiber Salon is that we can talk frankly and help each other out and figure out ways to collaborate and kind of cross pollinate all of our um, businesses. So we are working with each other and supporting each other. It's a good thing. Uh, Leanne um, from uh, Fire, I think, is the person who kind of started connecting the dots in terms yes. of. Um, I think she knew the most of us and invited us mm -hmm. to an event, and it's just taken off from there. And there's, I don't know, it's like 26 of us or something like that. It's more than that. Yeah, there's 26 people doing the Bay Area Fiber Fair right now, which is also kind of created by the Fiber Salon. Um, there are even more people in the Fiber Salon. I think that's closer to 50, but we just have some folks who are quieter than others. Yeah, and Leanne, um, I just want to give a shout out to her because she is always just such a great cheerleader. She isn't a fiber business owner at all. She's been working part time at Firebird Yarns for a couple of years, but even before that, she was such a cheerleader. I think she she came with her mom on my very first yarn crawl years and years ago. Um, and I've known her since then, but she's always, you know, out tooting everybody else's horn and helping us out. Yeah, she's amazing. And you're amazing too in terms of your, um, your um, skill set, like with everything. But it, you surprised me when you said that you had to be like in the right mind frame in order to, um, you know, to, to manage the uh, writing down of the patterns because you are the best editor and you are so articulate in terms of being able to um, uh, communicate where to make modifications and changes. I was so impressed. And I'm, a, I'm an ex-publisher, mm -hmm. so I'm a real jerk about that type of stuff. But I'm, in the, I'm also like a typo queen. Like I can, I can proofread my work to save my life. I wish I could, but I just make tons of typos. I think it's hard to proofread your own work. It's really hard because you know what it says. Like the same reason that like, I'm not a great test knitter for my patterns because I already kind of know what to do because I've done it before and I came up with it. So you kind of fill in the blanks and the people who literally read every single letter are the best at uh, testing. Well, I love that thread, and I think that it's going to look great on every, everybody. I mean, I don't, I, I don't see how that couldn't look cute on every, every shape and every size. It's, it's a really thoughtful design and really adorable and kind of perfect for our weather here. We just want a little mm -hmm. extra something. 
It really does keep you warm though, just getting the torso. Um, yeah, it was really fun to see all my test knitter or test crocheters come back with their sample projects because um, a lot of people did three colors like I did. Somebody did just one, but it's variegated. Somebody did lots of scrap yarns, which I did one of those as well. Um, and then all the different sizes and different kind of ways of wearing it. Because I could even see somebody who um, has a smaller chest, like pulling it up to have like a high collar with like a little button right here at the top could be cute. Doesn't work on me, but it would on somebody else. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it's super adaptable to it. Got a couple of places where I'm like, try it on. If you need more chains for the armhole, go back and add more chains. <laughs> as long as you have a certain multiple, you're good. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see more and more of them. I mean, I'm an accomplished knitter and a baby crocheter. Mm -hmm. um, so I am excited to try it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to make it myself, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to. So. I think you'll be surprised. It's, um, it's not too tricky. And you start out on the back, so you're just making a little rectangle. Um, and then the stitch pattern is both written and there's a diagram. And if you haven't done crochet diagrams much before, they are amazing because it literally looks like what you're doing. You can lay your crochet down on the paper and be like, oh yeah, that's the right shape. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, unlike knitting uh, stitch patterns where we kind of scrunch them into a grid. So like it's rectangular no matter what you're doing. The crochet, it shows the edging. So um, like this one, this is your yarn too. <laughs> this is my belly poke shawl pattern. Let me put it over the wall so you can see. And so you can see that edging and on the stitch diagram, it looks exactly that shape. Um, it's so you can see what you're building. So ridiculously beautiful. I love mm -hmm. it. Really beautiful. Okay, so back to our normal questions. If you were stranded on a desert island and you had to eat the same meal over and over and over and over again, what would you, what would you choose? I had, I think, I'm glad you gave me questions in advance. I had to think about this one because I'm super practical. So I'm like, well, it has to be nutritious and tasty and varied enough that I'm not going to get too bored. So what I ended up deciding on was the, um, like a vegetarian sampler platter, like you get at Ethiopian restaurants. I'm not going to try to say the name of it. I know it, but I'm sure I mispronounce it. But um, where you've got like lentils and split peas and greens and like the cabbage and carrots and all of the injera flatbread. I feel like that would um, like cover my nutritional basis and also be amazingly wonderful and want to eat it every day. That's a great choice and a unique choice. We've had a lot of sushi. <laughs> oh, interesting. But I feel like if you're on an island, you could maybe make your own sushi. <laughs> you could. Yeah, you could. Maybe. I want somebody to make me fresh and jar every day. Yeah. <laughs> Sashimi. I don't know if I pronounced that properly or not. Yeah. But. Um, what was the last piece of music you listened to really loudly? <laughs> it's actually been in my head since then. Uh, Tempo by Lizzo. Okay. Which is a really fun song. And if you haven't seen the video, you should see the video. Because, I mean, Lizzo has amazing videos in general. But that video is pretty wonderful. It's got, like, low riders. And, um, like, women are, like, almost trampolining off the low riders as they bounce and it's just beautifully shot. Uh, and then the song is super fun. And how about your favorite color? Yeah, that's hard. I'm really bad at picking favorites. <laughs> In general, yeah, I'm really bad at picking favorites. Um, I think gray, which is probably an unusual choice, but it's a color that I, I wear a lot. I like it a lot. And I think that there's so many different tones of gray where you get like different hues in it so like this is um kind of a purpley gray right like it's not purple but it's a purpley gray and it's got that um this is a what's it? heather has fishy yeah. shades of gray yeah <laughs> your names will crack me up i can't imagine even trying to fit them on the label for all so long <laughs> um yeah okay um what is your most annoying habit so oh, is this like a job interview where I'm supposed to say something that's actually a good no. habit, but I'm no. like pretending? No. If your <laughs> wife was to say like, I hate this about Kira, what would she say? <laughs> mm -hmm. The moment I, of truth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she would say. I think it's something that I know I do that I'm trying to get better at. Because yeah. I think it is annoying is interrupting people. And it's funny because I am. Um, I can still listen while I'm talking. And so I'm still listening to you, but I just want to toss something else in there too. And I had this one friend when I was a teenager and she had the same thing. So we would literally have conversations where we were both constantly talking, but also like listening and responding. 
because we could keep that going on and on. Um, but nobody else does that. And so it just seems like I don't care about what you're saying and I have my, my things better, which isn't at all how you mean it, but I'm trying to get myself to hold on to my thought for a minute. I have to do that all the time because I get inspired. I get, you know, I think like, oh, oh, you know, but my entire family does that. We all talk at the same time. Um, so I understand, I relate to that completely. So, Are you finding that harder now with Zoom? Sorry, motorcycle outside. Are you finding it harder with Zoom because there's that little delay and like it's harder to get the sort of the visual cue that someone's going to talk? So I feel like everyone's talking over each other now. It's not just me. <laughs> I 100% I believe that to be true. It's um, that tiny little bit of delay. You can't really tell whether somebody is, is finished or not, but I think it's okay. We can talk over each other. It's all good. <laughs> um, and do you have a child appropriate joke? Yes. Uh, so I literally can only ever remember one joke. Like that's it. But it's a really good joke. Uh, and it's totally child appropriate. Kids love it. So why can't you hear a pterodactyl in the bathroom? Why? Because the P is silent. <laughs> that's good. I like it because it's a spelling joke. Yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah. Family, intellectual. <laughs> You could tell me like 10 jokes and wait a minute and ask me to say a joke and it would be the same one because it's the only one I can ever remember. I don't even know why we asked this question because most people are like, nope, don't have a joke. Oh. And um, so I'm glad that you did. But also, um, I can't tell a joke to save my life. I have terrible timing. Tony's good. Tony's really good mm -hmm. at telling jokes, but I'm awful. Yes. Oh. So, no. He seems so charming. I've only seen him on your videos, but. He seems really nice and like a great sport to come and even do the yarn shop videos with you. He's very funny. I mean, I think he's very funny. Other people might not think he's very funny, but I think he's hilarious. So, yeah. I have to say, I don't mind the staying home part of things. Like, I really, I like my house. I really love my wife and my dogs. We all get along really well. What I miss is having people over because I love, love, love cooking for other people. And I can't do that now. Yeah, but like I haven't had a dinner party in since probably March, early March, late February, something like that. And that's never happened before. Like usually it's, you know, at one point I was having dinner parties like two or three times a week and that fit my life at the time. Now it's, you know, every couple of weeks, but still it's strange not to feed my friends because I feel like that's a way that I express my love for people is to feed them. Yeah. That's really true. I love that. I um, think the thing that I probably miss the most is going out to breakfast with my mom and Tony. We used to do that really regularly. Mm -hmm. and we'd just all sit down and enjoy breakfast together at one of the local places here. And, and I miss that. And apart from that, I don't miss anything. <laughs> so I miss my friends, but um, uh, we've stayed pretty well connected mm -hmm. uh, via Zoom and just, chatting with one another and then the stitch groups um in the shop i miss them terribly i miss having i miss having like a group of people in the shop at any given time which was always so like such an important thing for me to have that community and you know many of the people in that stitch group are like family like mm -hmm. we, you know we've all become very close but we meet up on zoom and it's sort of like it not everybody is enjoying the zoom process though for some yeah. people it's just not a substitute i have a limit like i've had some days with four different zoom interactions and that's too much for me like one or two i can handle um sometimes i really like when there's like that 40 minute cutoff and i'm like okay that's good <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kara, thank you so, so, so much. I can't wait to see you in person. Um, I'm so glad that we're, you know, part of the Fiber Salon and that we're working together for the Bay Area Fiber Fair, which, um, so the way in which we're doing these interviews going forward is that I'm interviewing um, Kara the day that, uh, or the week ahead. Week ahead, week behind, I don't know. 
I think this is a week ahead of next week when the week podcast ahead. goes out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when the pod when 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 the podcast comes out with Kira, it'll be that we had interviewed her a week behind. Is that right? Does it matter? Anyway, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't have to tell them what date it is. <laughs> it can be our secret. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody'll ever know, right? Unless like my hair is blue again next week and then then no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see you again in person. And um, thank you for, you know, being my teammate on the um, Sun and Fog. I couldn't have wished for a better person to, to showcase my yarn in a crochet pattern. I'm so grateful that you do knitting and crochet because I feel like a lot of the crochet, the crocheters are a little underrepresented in terms of great pattern support. So the fact that you do both is fantastic. And I'm proud that my yarn is, um, you know, is a part of that too. So thanks so much. And I'll hopefully see you soon, if not in person virtually. Actually, Sounds I think good. I'm seeing you next Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah, we've got a fiber salon. Yeah. So. Okay. See you next week. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank Bye. Bye. Bye, Kira. Bye. See you on the video call. Sorry, I wasn't there. I mean, uh, uh, good seeing you on the video call yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Now, yeah. You mean? Just yeah. Now, I mean, just now. Yeah. Yeah. The one that okay. just. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Now it's time for. <laughs> Yarn talk, where we talk about <laughs> other. Did we not decide to call it that? No, we're just, no, but I like that. Yarn talk or York. What do you got to show us, Cal? <laughs> Our professionalism just yeah. grows and grows. It grows. <laughs> well, I got a new yarn into the shop, and I'm really quite keen on this company. Um, they are so super supportive of LYSs. They're actually even doing like a drop ship program so that you could order through your LYS any of their yarns and um, and they will, you know, kind of route that through. Hmm. Basically, you place the order with your LYS. And so, um, but I got these into the shop too because I have the benefit of also being open and because I love what they're doing, which is they plant a tree um, in Africa for every single hank of yarn. That's amazing. Yeah, or it might be every bag of yarn that I buy. I can't remember. But anyway, they're planting lots of trees. <laughs> and I think that's amazing. And these are um, hand, um, sorry, these are um, self-striping. All of these are self-striping. What's that and mean? I was cut Well, it means it makes stripes. <laughs> <laughs> on its own, you just don't even... Yeah, you just knit and it makes stripes. Oh, you and have to knit. Yeah, doesn't you do it to... on its own. <laughs> it doesn't knit itself. Be amazing. Wouldn't it? So do you want to hold up the colors? Because they are pretty. Yeah. And it's a Look little bit different. Colors. I think I've kind of mentioned a bunch of times that I tend to, um, this is the Unique DK that I'm showing, but I have other bases too. Um, I tend to gravitate toward neutrals. I really love when people come into the shop and they're like, okay, uh, you know, like, I, want, I always want them to be able to make a sweater. That's the goal, to always have a sweater quantity and to have colors that are eminently wearable. But these, they're really special. And, you know, look at how bright and fun and vibrant that is. But then you can also have a slightly mm. more muted. Mm. I, I just, I tend to gravitate toward the more muted palette. And it's so it's really good for me. It's an attractive have, hank as well. Isn't that beautiful? Oh yeah, it is, that's isn't a good, it? That's a good, yeah. that's a handsome hank. You know what? That was a really excellent use of the word hank. I know. I'm proud of you. Thanks. Look how pretty that is. Only took me three years. <laughs> three years. <laughs> Do you know the difference between a hank and a skein? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. So. Really? Do you really not? Yeah, know? I know. I know the difference between a skein and a hank. Yeah. What's the difference? Do you? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. Why do, pretend I don't know. Oh, uh, <laughs> I know a ball. Yeah, you've got a ball, which, which is, is a, a ball. cake. Right, right. And then, and then uh, this is a hank. No, a, a cake is after you take a hank and then you 
put it yeah, on I know the, the Swift. And then What's a, skein? a skein, I'll go get one so that you can Don't see leave the difference. Me with these people on my own. Oh, you can manage it. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> anyway, this is a hank of yarn. It's made of wool and oh. Yeah. She's back. There you go, that's a skein. Oh yes. See this I think in Britain yeah. this would be a bowl of wool. Well, you it's know, all people... wool. When you say we don't say yarn in Britain, it's all wool, isn't it? Yeah, everybody just refers so this is to a skein. it as wool, irrespective of whether it's cotton this is or whatever. A hank. And yeah. there's, there's a cake. Somewhere. The cakes are after it's made up, and then they you've don't got balls around, yeah. over here. Look, you could get one of the new Zyber balls. Actually, Zyber those balls. are new too. Okay, <laughs> those are new. Those are new too. Oh, we'll do the. Don't let's just. Oh, let's all, right, just all right, all right, Save okay. our. Yeah, save our. So, yeah, I know we yeah. don't want to like <laughs> blow it all, you know, in one episode. Steady, steady. <laughs> okay, keep going. Ste oh, okay. So I have two more colors that I just thought I'd show you just to give you an idea of what I have Anik. available Anik. in the. Anique. Anique. I think it's Anique. I don't actually know. I don't know. Unique. Anique. Anique. Unique. No, I think if the owners could contact us and tell you how well it's in there it is. I would say unique. I thought, it's a play I thought on it unique. was unique, DK. Okay. But I don't, you know. That's kind of like, if you're a fan of basketball, there's some <laughs> Golden State Warriors colors there. These are hand-dyed also. These are hand-dyed, self-striping. Self These are nice, self-striping. It's just such a good company. I'm just so delighted to, um, to also, hat. you know, I care about that stuff. I care about the stories behind the yarn makers. I care whether people are ethical and whether, you know, that what was their businesses the first, are like. That was what and, we set out to do. It was yeah. the ethical production of yarn. Yeah, ethical treatment that of animal, it. ethical treatment of humans. We're and into the ethical treatment of customers. Yeah. Very ethical with them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't rough them up. No. <laughs> Not too much anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's the yarn that I wanted to showcase. So much color and on the table. There here. is so much color. Do you want to hold up several in one go? <laughs> one go. Oh, <laughs> Did I just put you on the spot? Hold I'm gonna try and up. hold them all up. Hold them all up. Testing my hand holding skills. Oh. Oh God. Oops. Oh. Oh, oops! It's all gone horribly wrong. And you know what? While he's doing that, I'm going to talk about. There they are. Look at that. A lot of people pausing right there just to look at those. Just things. to look at those, yeah. Okay. You know, I went and grabbed this just because um, it was in a skein. <laughs> just in case there are mountain lions. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> you never know. And, After that um, self striping yarn. This is one of this is um, Kenzie by Haiku, and um, it's really lovely tweed, and it's one of those yarns that's eminently affordable. It's like nine ninety five or something like that, and I have that in a bunch of colors too. I'm starting to gear up for winter. Yeah. So it's maybe coming. next it's cold maybe day we'll, today. It is cold. chilly. Yeah, it is chilly. It was not chilly yesterday when we were in Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen, no, no. It was really just such. We live in such a interesting area where you know Pacifica, where we have the. When fog we left the house, come to the shop, chilly. it was sunny and yeah. warm. Now it's foggy with lots, whales everywhere. Yeah, lots of micro. Glad I got my yeah. home and yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts, which is a really great choice. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for suffering with us. Yes. And, um, episode 12. Wow. 12. Dozen, yeah. dozen episodes. That's amazing. A dozen episodes. A dozen episodes. We've done a dozen episodes. Next week is the 13th. I'm not superstitious. Maybe we'll call it the 14th. Third, no, we'll call it 12A. 12A. That's a good idea. And then we'll stick yeah. to the 14th. Right. <laughs> I'm not superstitious I'm either. I'm not superstitious but, yeah. either. That's typical oh, Sagittarian. Should... <laughs> Go on. Maybe we should do like something spooky. Because it's, you know, the 13th, the 13th episode. Okay, we will, we'll think about it. Yeah. Any suggestions, put them on the bottom yeah. underneath the um, YouTube thing. Have a lovely safe week. Be yeah. safe. Yeah, be well. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Six wear feet mask. apart. Avoid wear large mask, crowds. And like wear a mask over your nose and over your mouth. Yeah. And should we say, even though it's late, happy birthday to Poppy. Our niece is oh, yeah. just turned 16 in Wales. Happy birthday, Poppy. <laughs> we are so proud of Poppy. I mean, we're proud of She'll all be on the of show our nieces and nephews. They're when we all do a special yeah. show from Wales, we'll have them on. 
My she family. is so right on. I mean, she is a feminist. She's an advocate for yeah. social justice reform. She's a trailblazer. She yeah. really is. She, will we, be. she Yeah, we think she's going to be in charge of. Uh, well, she. I mean, hopefully, she'll become. The, and she can eat a whole okay. rack of ribs she is. in she's less than ten so minutes. Tiny, she's pretty amazing. But she is mighty. So she yeah. was very sick afterwards. But she was. <laughs> she was right, trying to beat her uncle. Okay. <laughs> See you next week, everyone. Bye. Episode 13. <laughs> Bye. Oh, it was Corey and, um, so it was Corey and Garrett's wedding anniversary as well. We would be okay. remiss if yeah. we mentioned Poppy's birthday and didn't say happy anniversary to Corey and well, Garrett. We just did, yeah. Happy anniversary, Corey and Garrett. Anyway, be well. Take be care. Well. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye. Don't want to do that. Bye.